Welcome back to another 2023 NFL mock draft. Today we are taking a look at Pro Football Network's latest mock draft by James Fragosa. James is my guy. I really like what he does for the site. And he took a different approach to what we see in mock drafts. We're going to see more trades. And James decided to really blow things up. And when you look at what he did, uh, there's some interesting things that he did in terms of quarterbacks going to different locations. So big names going to new places. Aaron Rodgers gets traded to the Jets. Lamar Jackson traded to the Falcons. Derek Carr to the Commanders. Trey Lance to the Titans. Sean Payton, I don't can't really trade to the Broncos, but he was going to the Broncos. Tom Brady goes to the Four ers and Jimmy Garoppolo signs with the Raiders. So are all of these realistic? Maybe not, but it's still going to be interesting to see some of these big names are going to go somewhere, and it's really going to affect where certain people go in terms of this mock draft or even just the actual NFL draft. So let's take a look at where he has certain guys going. So with how this works out, he has the Colts trading up with the Bears to get Bryce Young at number one. That's a really interesting uh, selection. I think that's uh, a good fit for Bryce Young. And I think that Indianapolis obviously has that intriguing offense where you see some potentials for explosiveness. I mean, Jonathan Taylor is an absolute monster, but Bryce Young gives them some real exciting potential. And they also, Indianapolis gets to jump over Houston, who comes in next in number two and takes CJ Stroud. So that's really going to be a big key. I think if you're Houston, you're really kicking yourselves for winning that last game. I know that sounds weird to say, but with the limited options at quarterback in the first round, then it's going to be hard for teams to justify not having that top pick. So I think Houston is still having to settle for CJ Stroud, I think is, is not a bad thing necessarily. I think that they're still in very good hands. CJ Stroud is a phenomenal talent, a guy who can make every throw at, at any level. And I think that his performance against Georgia, once again, was a big reason why he is still considered a top two. I think that there are some people that even with the concerns about Bryce Young's size would maybe even have CJ Stroud above Bryce Young. Bryce Young's talent though is still pretty phenomenal. It's going to be tough for them to beat. Arizona is in a good place too. I think that they're a team that could also trade down and get some more draft capital. They stay put here and get Jalen Carter. I think that's a tough guy to pass up on. I, I think either way, if you're getting to trade for more picks, and someone's going to trade up to try and pick a quarterback, then you're in a great position. But also, you in this mock draft, James has the debate of, do you take Jalen Carter or do you take Will Anderson Jr.? With Chicago essentially taking the the other one here. So Jalen Carter is a three-down lineman on the interior for Georgia. He is a freak in terms of his athleticism and his power, someone who is going to be a dominant force at the next level. Same thing with Will Anderson. He's going to give Chicago fans uh, flashbacks of uh, Khalil Mack. I think that's going to be something that will help this defense quite a bit. And then even you look at the Seattle pick with Miles Murphy. Miles Murphy is another freak who has only gotten better in his time at Clemson. He started as a freshman and really moved on up it was really fun to see what he could do uh, since a freshman. He has just improved every single year. He has worked on his game. He has improved upon his traits that he just naturally has. That's really fun. The Seattle defense could be really exciting. Another team that could give flashbacks of a former player, that Bruce Irvin kind of production. If you look at Detroit then next, another team that, you know, you could see them getting a quarterback. You could see them taking a quarterback here. And I think that they're going to be fine with Jared Goff. They could stay put. Another team that could maybe be in contention for some of those quarterbacks that we just mentioned. Christian Gonzalez is a good pick for them. Jeff Okuda is a phenomenal talent at cornerback, a star for the Lions. And this defense is full of talented players with that bring good energy. I think Christian Gonzalez is going to be a good fit. He's six foot two, 200 pounds, has good length, plays really well with the ball in the air. And I th I think that this is someone who's going to fit in well with this defense. Like I said, a lot of energy, a lot of young talent on this defense. And they were playing well towards the end of the year. I think they build upon that. It's going to be a group that would be really entertaining to watch when it comes to 2023. And that's a another guy that can really make an impact. Then you go to Las Vegas. They have a quite a few needs here. Offensive line be one of them, specifically offensive tackle. Paris Johnson Jr. is one of the most popular picks to be the first tackle off the board, and Las Vegas gets to address that need. Could be another team that trades up for a quarterback 
if needed, you know, if they don't do certain things. But I, I think you're looking at a team that is content with where they're at in terms of rebuilding. I don't think fan base will be content, but getting Paris Johnson Jr. is going to be good for whoever plays quarterback. And then finally, because Baltimore moves on from Lamar Jackson, you have to draft a quarterback essentially. So Will Levis is the pick here. This is a guy who is kind of polarizing right now. Mel Kuyper says that he should be the first quarterback taken. And it's, you know, we keep going down that path of, is this a legitimate player or is this just all hype? And Will Levis definitely has some talent that jumps out on tape, but it's just a matter of does he actually have what it takes to be an elite NFL quarterback. Now, Carolina is another team to watch in terms of trading up for a quarterback. I think that Anthony Richardson is going to be someone I picked to go there to Carolina. I think that this is just a good situation for everybody. You have a new coaching staff coming in. You have a quarterback that needs some time to develop, and that's a really good fit to me. I think that gives him plenty of time to figure things out, to learn from Sam Darnold, to learn from the staff, and that's just a perfect fit. He has all the talent in the world, his arm talent, his athleticism. He is going to be a really exciting player if he's able to put that all together. Then you round out the top 10 with a luxury pick. Philadelphia is in a great position. Not only are they playing in the NFC Championship game this coming weekend, they have two picks in the first round. And that's something for a team that has a lot of talent, again, is a luxury pick. Tyree Wilson, to me, is kind of riding a high. I think his stock is really sitting high and it might come back down once we see us getting closer to the NFL draft, but he is someone who has all the intangibles that you like, all of the skill set that you like, and Philadelphia could use an edge player like him. They have some talented players, like I said, but they're getting a little bit older. So drafting someone a little bit younger to be able to dominate on the edge is going to be a, a key for them. And, and so James has him going there. Tennessee needs some help on the offensive line. Peter Skaronsky is an interesting pick for me because he's listed as an offensive tackle, but I think a lot of people send him in as a guard and he'll get a shot to play offensive tackle. I think that every team will, whoever picks him will give him a shot, but ultimately I think his size just puts him in at guard. Either way, he's a talented player who's going to figure it out. He's going to compete and he's going to find a way to be successful at the next level. Houston has its second pick in the top 12 they go with Quentin Johnston, six foot four, 215 pound wide receiver from TCU. He is someone who not only has the ball skills of a guy who's six foot four, elite athleticism when the ball's in the air, he also has underrated quickness that we're just really starting to see more in mainstream. You're seeing more people talking about it. He is someone who can make guys miss after the catch because of his quick feet, and that's something that's going to help him at the next level. You know, you look at, I, I kind of like the the pairing of C.J. Stroud and Quentin Johnston almost a little bit more than Bryce Young and Quentin Johnston, but either way, Houston's in good hands. Jordan Addison goes to Green Bay. This is a guy who is a master at separation. He is someone who understands the nuances of route running, the ability to create room between him and his man, and that's going to make life easy for the Packers for, a, again, whoever's playing quarterback. It, it, even in this mock draft, it, it you look at who is going to play quarterback for Green Bay, and getting a guy like Jordan Addison makes life easier for anybody that's throwing the football. Next, we have an interesting pick, a guy who is really creeping into the first round and starting to actually jump up pretty high. You look at Daniel Jeremiah just released his mock draft. I believe he had Devin Witherspoon going sixth. Here, James has Devin going 14th to the New England Patriots, a team that needs some help at cornerback. Devin Witherspoon is a guy who plays with no fear. He is not afraid to be physical. He is not afraid to help in terms of stopping the run. And that is something that's going to be very, very interesting. Now we go back to Green Bay, a team that is getting some compensation for losing Aaron Rodgers. They are going to take a player that's going to block for whoever plays quarterback. So in this case, probably Jordan Love. And Broderick Jones, to me, is an underrated player. I think someone who is going to rise up as we get closer towards the draft. He is a phenomenal talent, an absolute mauler when it comes to blocking in the trenches. Someone I think that is going to get a lot more recognition the more people watch him. And he's a first-round pick for sure. He was absolute force for Georgia, especially against TCU in the national championship game. So that'll be a really good pick for them. That's a pretty good haul with Jordan Addison 
and Broderick Jones. Next, we go to Michael Mayer going to Washington. If they're satisfied with Carson Wentz, or again, in this case, there's really only four quarterbacks. And since they're off the board in the first round, you're probably going to trade back if you're going to draft a quarterback or you're just going to take someone else with this pick. Michael Mayer is the most well-rounded tight end in this class. He is tight end number one for a reason. You look at what he's been able to do for Notre Dame, a very capable blocker who can be a force. He's also improved tremendously as a pass catcher, mostly because Notre Dame didn't really have anybody else to throw the football to. So you go to the most reliable guy, a guy whose hands have gotten uh, significantly better and someone who's going to make Washington better as well. Then we go to Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh, just like pretty much everybody else in this draft, this is a really good draft for corners. If you need a corner that has good size, this is the draft for you. Cam Smith goes to Pittsburgh, and I think that just pairing him with a Mike Tomlin defense is a really good fit. I like a lot of cornerbacks that can go to Pittsburgh, and I think that this is another one that's really good. Cam Smith is a phenomenal talent from South Carolina. He is going to be a great addition to that secondary. Now, this is a player next at going to Detroit in Brian Brissy that, to me, is kind of an underrated talent. He is someone that a lot of people – are I think sleeping on because Jalen Carter commands most of the attention when you come to when it comes to defensive tackle. Now, injuries are a concern. Staying healthy is going to be a big key for Brian Brissy, and that's going to be something I think we pay attention to in terms of how much of an impact can he make. However, when you look at this again, you look at this Detroit defense, a ton of t- talented players, a ton of exciting players, and adding Brian Bercy is yet another, you know, their second round, first round pick, another exciting player that can make big plays. You look at he's six foot five, 300 pounds. He has been a monster for Clemson the minute he stepped on campus. And I think that's going to continue at the next level as long as he can stay healthy. Next, going to Tampa Bay, a guy who lately has been getting a lot of first-round attention, Lucas Van Ness, the edge from Iowa. Again, Iowa is one of the more underrated programs in college football year in and year out, and the players that they produce really just exceed expectations. Now you have Van Ness coming into the first round, going to Tampa Bay, excuse me, a franchise that is going to kind of go through a rebuild. That is going to be a little bit tough for their fan base to endure, but I think it's time if Tom Brady is ultimately not going to be the future plan at quarterback, then maybe a quarterback is something they trade up for, but it's going to be really tough. You're going to have to give up a lot. So in this case, they're just going to stick with what's available. And then if they're really bad next year, then they have a chance to get a Caleb Williams or a Drake may Keely Ringo goes to Seattle next. I really like the idea of putting a corner opposite of Tariq Woolen that has a lot of potential. Ringo comes in at six foot two, 210 pounds, has good speed and aggressive corner. I think someone that can add to the Seattle secondary and make an impact. Ringo, like I said, very physical. It does get him in trouble sometimes, but also people said that about Sauce Gardner. I think that's something just, it comes with the territory. If you're going to be physical, you're going to get some penalties but I don't think that's anything you should shy away from if you're an NFL team. Zay Flowers makes an appearance in the first round going to the Los Angeles Chargers. Justin Herbert does need some more weapons, at least just one that could stay healthy. Mike Williams struggles some injuries. Keenan Allen struggles some injuries. So I think adding a talent like Zay Flowers is huge. You could also look at going tight end here if you're the Chargers. But Zay Flowers, to me, has been an absolute stud for Boston College, and that says something, just in that statement alone. The fact that he's been as successful as he has been with the Eagles, it says a lot about his talent and what he's going to do at the next level. The more interesting pick to me is Jackson Smith and Jigba. Now, the hamstring injury is going to be a big concern for a lot of teams. I think a lot of teams are going to back off of him because of that injury, which right or wrong is just how it's going to be. But when you look at what he's been able to do when healthy, Jackson Smith and Jigba has been one of the more explosive wide receivers in college football. Now he kind of was overshadowed by his teammate, Marvin Harrison Jr., but Marvin Harrison Jr. cannot go into the NFL draft this year. So he's going to get a chance to sneak into that first round. I think that at best he will be a late first round pick. And when you look at what Baltimore gets, it's another talented player in the first round another first round pick in this this is why i really like this mock draft by james because we're looking at trades and most of the time you're just looking at the picks 
But when we look at adding players into the mix and getting them to uh, uh, different locations and different franchises, now you get some duplicates in terms of picks. And we're seeing multiple teams with multiple first round picks. And that's really exciting. The Minnesota Vikings obviously need some help at corner. The fact that Joey Porter Jr. is available means that they should sprint to the podium to try and get that pick in. Obviously, you have his dad who played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's played in the NFL for a while. You know that name. Joey Porter Jr. is a phenomenal talent. Six foot two. Again, six foot two corners are plentiful in this mock draft, in this just draft class in general. That is something that, again, if you need a corner, this is the, the class for you. This is the, the class that if you really need help there, which Minnesota definitely needs some help. Patrick Peterson, if he comes back, is just getting older. He's going to be still pretty good for them, but I think they need to find a younger solution. Now, they did add a handful of players to their class last year or into their team last year with that draft class but none of them could stay healthy. So now you need to find another talented player. I think adding a corner here isn't a bad option, especially with what's available. Jacksonville gets a player that's going to block for, for Trevor Lawrence. Uh, and I think Osiris Torrance is an absolute mauler, an absolute bowling ball of a blocker, someone who's going to be tough to beat. And he has faced some talented players in his day. And that's going to be something that's big for the Jaguars, a team that their offense has really taken great strides. And I think adding an offensive lineman doesn't necessarily hurt. I mean, it's never going to hurt to add an offensive lineman just in general. New York comes in next. The Giants, the disappointing loss to the Eagles. They are adding wide receiver Josh Downs from North Carolina, someone who is very good in the slot. I think that's something that we saw against Minnesota. They really just kind of gashed Minnesota. Uh, over the middle of the short mesh plays, if you will. And I think Josh Downs will be a great option for Daniel Jones, or at least, you know, give them something to work towards in the future. Dallas adding Trenton Simpson. Simpson is someone who has great athleticism, someone that can move all over the field. And I, I think that this is a good fit for him. With everybody focusing on Micah Parsons, adding someone like Simpson gives them another athletic linebacker that can make plays sideline to sideline. That is someone that I really like. I really like that pick by James. This The Bengals need some offensive line help. Obviously, they played a lot better. That Their performance against Buffalo this weekend was phenomenal. I think you have to give them some credit for what they were looking to do. And I think that adding Cody Mouch from North Dakota State – is a good pick. I think that he can play all over the line, just like he did at NDSU, and that's someone that can help protect Joe Burrow. Next is the Saints, who find their way into the first round of this mock draft. And again, I don't know what the trades were. Uh, we have to go. I'll link the actual mock draft in the description. But they get Siaki Ika, a two-gap player that is really tough to block. Even with double teams, I think that's someone that's going to give their linebackers plenty of time to make plays behind him. And that's someone who's going to get a lot of love from his teammates. I think that's a great pick. I think that even though the saints, you know, you look at what they need again, the first four quarterbacks after that, you're going to have to wait till probably round three or later before you're going to start taking someone like that. So that's, that's a good pick for them. Buffalo gets B. John Robinson. It's really tough for me to see B. John Robinson fall out of the first round, so I'm happy that he's still sticking around in most mock drafts. I think that that's a good good pick for the Bills' offense, a talented offense that could use a big-time playmaker. Now, it's tough because the free agent market for running backs is very, very loaded this year, and it's something that's going to really hurt his draft stock just naturally. I mean, it's already tough to be a running back in the NFL draft because of just how things have changed. But B. John Robinson is still a talent that I think a lot of teams will really want. Kansas City as adds B.J. Ojolari. I think he's a long player that can make an impact on the edge. They need some help on defense. It's kind of tough to not pick an offensive player for Kansas City in the first round. But Ojolari has you know, his brother's in the NFL. He has the talent to be a talent, a really, really good player for this team. And I think this is a good pick. And then finally, wrapping it up, Brian Branch going to Philadelphia. Now, Alabama secondary 
was rough this year at times. But I think Brian Branch was one of the few players that stood out, that played consistently, and I think that's someone that can make a big impact on a secondary that has some aging players, but some that could add some wisdom to these young guys. And I think Brian Branch is a great way to end this first round of this 2021-2023 NFL mock draft. Again, great a great mock draft by James. I like the concept of adding the trades in there. I, the, just switching it up, that was, it was really fun to see, really fun to watch. And I think from there, it's going to be interesting to see what – it just gives you a different way to look at it. It gives you different ideas of where teams could go, who teams can draft. And this is just another – different mock draft that makes you really think and consider what are the many options that these teams have right now. 